Hi there, this is Jen from Dejan Eats, home of the Ari Happy Vegan. Uh, welcome to another of our video tutorials. Today we're going to look at some um, basic vegan breakfast recipes. And of course, we're going to focus on um, some Jamaican food too. When we announced that Dejan Eats was going vegan, you know, we had some really positive response from you guys. I'm excited about that. Um, but we also had some questions. You know, we had some of my Jamaican friends going, all right, so what are you, you going to do? What are you going to cook? Um, and one of the things I told them is that we tend, in Jamaica, we tend to eat a lot of food that one would think of as vegan. And vegan food simply means that it's, it doesn't have any animal products in it. Make sense? Um, but we don't refer to it as vegan food in Jamaica. We simply refer to it as food. So as, as long as it doesn't have any animal products, whether it's meat or milk or butter or anything like that, or eggs, you know, we're good to go. And the Jamaican staple that we have, everybody in Jamaica has this at least once a week, I guarantee it, <laughs> um, is fried dumplings. It's usually paired with plantains. Fried dumplings and plantains, very vegan, very delicious. Um, a brief history about fried dumplings. Um, it is very similar to American biscuits, except it's cooked on the top of the stove and not in the oven. The texture is a little different, um, but there are some very striking similarities. It, we sometimes refer to fried dumplings in Jamaica as Johnny Cakes, and that's because originally they were called Journey Cakes. See, we had slaves in Jamaica, much like America, we have, you know, very similar history. We had slaves in Jamaica, and when they would make these long journeys, they would take the dumplings with them, and they'd refer to them as journey cakes. And eventually that changed, you know. We put our own unique spin on everything, and nothing ever remains the same in Jamaica. So it went from journey cakes to Johnny cakes. <laughs> and, but most people call it fried dumplings. I'm going to share with you something that will make fried dumplings easy for you at home. And if you remember this ratio, you can never go wrong. You want to start out with a cup of flour. And to that cup, the ratio would be 1 to 1 to 1 to half. Let me explain. You want 1 cup of flour to one teaspoon of fat. Um, this fat can be uh, non-dairy butter or margarine. In this case, I'm gonna be using uh, coconut oil in its solid state. Uh, when coconut is at room temperature, it's typically solid. It is fantastic in baking and easily replaces butter or margarine. The main reason, honestly, that I use coconut oil is because I have a fat gel on top of it. <laughs> So I just use it for everything, including on my face, okay? <laughs> um, to that, we also want to add one teaspoon of leavening agent. In this case, it is baking soda. And here is the half. We add half a teaspoon of salt for flavor. So again, it's one cup of flour to one teaspoon of butter um, to one teaspoon of baking powder and half a teaspoon of salt. Got it? Good. <laughs> Let's go. We're gonna start out with the fat. And we're gonna put the fat in the flour. I'm gonna break it up with our fingers, kind of coating the starch with the fat. And, and what that does, it reduces the amount of gluten that is in the flour. And so it doesn't make it as chewy. We're gonna treat it like breadcrumbs. And to that, guys, we want to add the one teaspoon of baking powder. But what I didn't tell you is that I'm cooking for two. And since it's two of us, I've doubled the recipe. So what you're looking at is actually two cups of flour, and I added two teaspoons of butter, and this is two teaspoons of baking powder. All right. And then now we add the one teaspoon of salt. Of course, because it's doubled, half and half equals one, of course. See, you're fantastic in math. <laughs> they get that all together. And the only other thing now that we need is, is um, three quarter cups 
of cold water. Cold water at the fridge will be perfect. I'm gonna add that. You can add it a little bit at a time to incorporate the flour. It's always best to add a little at a time um, because then you can add more. <laughs> but if you add too much and you end up with a sticky mess, and then you have to add more flour, and then you stir off your ratio, and you know, then you might end up with a sticky mess. So I have to tell you guys what happened <laughs> when I first met my boyfriend's parents. He's, he's my husband now, but at the time he was my boyfriend. Um, in order to do that, let me give you a brief history. I was 16 when I came to America. Um, I didn't know how to cook. But I came here alone, and since I liked certain luxuries, you know, like eating, I had to learn how to cook and very, very, very quickly. So I got a bunch of recipes, but most of those recipes were for American food or Italian food, but not really for Jamaican food. So I, I didn't start off cooking Jamaican food. Um, so my, my husband, my boyfriend then, who is also Jamaican, took me to visit his to meet his parents in New York. His parents, by the way, are very Jamaican. Lovely people, but very, very Jamaican. <laughs> so we got to cooking and his mom asked me to cook the fried dumplings. Now, yeah, I'm sweating bullets because this is not something I make on the regular and it's also something during the very few times that I've made it have come out really badly. But you know, I stay calm and I make the dumplings and they look all right. And um, his mom tried one before we served it, you know, at the table. And let me tell you guys, it was perhaps one of the most atrocious things I've ever made in my entire life. <laughs> but you know, she said, let's try it again. We tried it the second time, and the second time was equally as atrocious. But Dale's parents, they're so kind and sweet that they sat at the table and they ate it, and you know, there wasn't a complaint anywhere around because they were just, you know, trying to make me feel good. At some point, it got so bad that his mom suggested that perhaps the flour was bad. Look, if, if that's my saving grace, I, I jumped on it. Yeah, the flour was bad. But you know and I knew that there was nothing wrong with the flour. I just didn't know how to make it. But I practiced and practiced. And with this ratio that I shared with you, I finally got it right. I'm just going to add a little bit more water to this. <coughs> and as you can see, guys, it's coming very nicely together. We actually didn't even need all three quarter cups of the water. We use about half a cup so that's why you really need to play around with the water sometimes you'll use all three quarter cups sometimes you'll use less and that really depends you know on your altitude on the temperature on the flour so many things so always start out with less and this is true not just for the dumplings let me take this off so you get a better view not just for dumplings but really for anything that you are baking, any dough. You see I'm folding it back onto me and pushing out with my elbow. And that's what you want to do until it becomes smooth. Now, I'm really only putting on a front for the camera because when I make this, and I usually make this several times a week, I put it in my mixer because I'm not going to be standing over the door doing this. But in case you don't have a mixer, I'm going to show you how it's done. See? Normally put it in my KitchenAid. It's coming together very nicely. You want to keep kneading the dough until it is smooth. So here you have it, guys. The dough is nice and smooth. And um, what we're going to do is let this rest. Right now, the gluten strands in there are, are very tight. And so if we were to try to separate it and shape it into individual dumplings, it will be very difficult. So you want to just, you know, let it stay for half an hour or so for them to relax. Now, when my mother came to visit me and I told her about it, about the resting, you know, we made 
pasta, we made fresh bread, we made dumplings, and every single time I made dough, it had to rest. <laughs> and she made a comment saying, you know, your dough must be the hardest working dough in town <laughs> because it always has to rest. But when she tried it, you know, after it rested, she realized that, you know, there is some truth to it. So guys, just fold it into a ball. Like that, so where it has a smooth top, okay? And then you put it in a container and put it in the fridge or you could even leave it out for half an hour for it to rest. I'll see you then. Okay, my darlings, it has been 30 minutes and as you can see, our dough is considerably more relaxed, which is exactly what we're looking for. So the two cups of flour that we have used will be enough to make um, 12 dumplings. Normally when I have one cup of flour, I would make six with that. So you double that, math again, and we make 12. And to get 12, I normally just ha keep halving it until I've reached my 12. I have four, and from each of those, I'm going to do three. Can you tell I was really good at math? <laughs> Not really. Okay. In the meantime, we have a pan that is heating, and to that we're gonna add some oil to fry our dumplings. So I want you guys to see what I'm doing, that I'm taking each little ball, I have 12 of them, I'm turning it into a ball. Can you see? Okay, good. And then I'm going to flatten that ball. A lot of folks in Jamaica, they don't flatten it, they fry it as the ball, I like to flatten mine and then let it puff up now a lot of people do what is called shallow frying and shallow frying as opposed to say deep fat frying is where you use enough oil to, to reach about half of whatever you're cooking so let me show you so you would put enough oil to put about to reach about half of the dumpling so you cook half of the item at a time and then you flip it over when you're doing deep fat frying the entire ingredient is immersed in the oil so all sides cook at once well we're going to do neither of those two options um what we're going to do is something called pan frying and that's where you just put a little bit of water a little bit of oil pardon enough to cover the surface of the pan and fry from there. I find that way I don't use as much oil, I don't waste as much oil, and the dumplings are never greasy. <clears throat> so I'm going through and completing the balls. Add the oil, this is probably going to be a quarter cup to the hot pan, and just let it melt. This is coconut oil, you know, like we, Discussed before, at room temperature, coconut oil is solid. But once you put it in, it'll start to melt very nicely. There we go. Beautiful. As soon as that's melted, you'll be ready to start cooking. Now we're just gonna put the dumplings in the oil and I'm not sure if you can hear that sizzle, but there's a sizzle. You want to make sure that the oil is hot enough when you put it in to avoid the dumplings seeking, seeping it all up. Good, we put them in. And what I do is just keep turning. I turn fairly often, maybe about every two minutes or so, so that the sides are evenly browned. And you don't want to overcrowd the pan, but you want to get as much in as possible without them really touching. All right, darlings, we have flipped and flipped and they are perfect and finished. Take a look. <laughs> Beautiful. There's scarcely anything easier to make, let me turn it off, than a Jamaican fried dumplings. You should try it at home. I hope that the recipe that I have shared with you makes it easier for you to make Jamaican fried dumplings in your kitchen it's beautiful and i've added them to a plate of plantains that i've already prepared 
<laughs> now listen, for all my Jamaican Yadi friends who are watching the video, they're probably rolling their eyes when they hear me say plantains. So for their benefit, I'm going to pronounce it the way we do in Jamaica. I've added it to the plate of plantains. <laughs> and that makes a perfect Jamaican breakfast, guys. And more importantly, it is vegan and cruelty free. So I have to break it so you can see what the inside is like. Ooh, it's hot! Oh, can you see that? It is divine. You add that with plantain, and this is how we eat it. Mmm. It's perfect. Uh, for this and other recipes, please be sure to visit us at DajanEats.com and you'll get lots of really awesome tips. This is Jen from Dejan Eats, home of the Ari Happy Vegan. Let's cook together.